There are lots of YouTube videos showing measurements of airflow through a hole in a box underneath a vacuum cleaner head. The videos often attempt to draw a conclusion about the cleaning performance of the machine based only on this one measurement. In reality, many other factors are important, and this video explains the problems with these tests that you should be aware of. The open hose, or an unimpeded cleaner head, has minimal resistance to airflow. This airflow is the largest the motor can produce and can be called the short circuit airflow. But when the cleaner head is on a carpet, the carpet acts like a filter, adding resistance and restricting airflow. This reduced airflow can be called the pile airflow. The difference between the short circuit airflow and the pile airflow depends on both the carpet type, which changes the level of resistance, and the maximum suction the motor can produce when under resistive load. High suction machines will sustain relatively higher pile airflows, whereas low suction machines will struggle to overcome the carpet's resistance to airflow and suffer greater pile airflow loss relative to its short circuit airflow. This is explained in detail in the video linked to in the description. Short circuit airflow at an open hose or through an unobstructed cleaner head is irrelevant. Don't be fooled, learn the distinction. Only the airflow through a carpet pile contributes to cleaning performance. This pile airflow can't easily be measured directly when carpet is laid on a floor. Some videos attempt to measure the pile airflow by putting a rug on top of the box under the cleaner. This is highly misleading and doesn't measure the true pile airflow when a carpet is laid on the floor. Not all carpets have the porous backing material used in such tests. Many are airtight, which prevents airflow up from the base. Similarly, when carpet is laid on the floor, like in the real world, the floor itself severely reduces upflow through the pile. Both non-porous backing material and the floor add huge resistance and dramatically reduce pile airflow. This isn't simulated when a porous rug is placed over an unrestrictive open box where air can flood in from underneath. This open box situation measures nearer the short circuit airflow than the substantially more restricted pile airflow. Don't be fooled. It's a myth that high pile airflow is all that's important to get good cleaning performance. Higher pile airflows in laid carpets are achieved with higher suction, but there's a limit to the pile airflow possible before the onset of cleaner head clamping. This is discussed in detail in the video linked to in the description. Many factors contribute to the overall carpet cleaning performance and ensure available pile airflow is best utilised. Small dirt particles become physically stuck in the pile's fibres and must be freed to be able to be removed by that pile airflow. Being able to optimally separate the pile and dislodge trapped particles is just as critical to cleaning performance as adequate pile airflow. Again, this is fully detailed in the link in the description. Tests which measure airflow never formally quantify cleaning performance. They confuse short circuit airflow with pile airflow and then simply assume pile airflow is all that's important. The only way to measure how well a vacuum cleaner actually cleans is by performing strict, industry standardised testing. Such testing is highly rigorous and follows a universally accepted methodology. It's important because it provides a fair and identical way to compare apples with apples in a statistically significant way. YouTube amateur bedroom tests simply can't match the carefulness and rigour of professional testing. Don't be fooled. In summary, if you ever see videos measuring suction pressure with a gauge at the open hose, 
Short circuit airflow through a hole in a box using a spinning turbine or airflow meter. Or near short circuit airflow with a porous rug over a box or something equivalent. Then recognize it's not representative of real world usage and doesn't provide anything meaningful to help draw fair conclusions about a product. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.